The other way to look at this uh, the same question would be to start from the primal problem and see what we can what we can argue. We will do that as well and I uh, will tell you why we are doing this two different things. Uh, when, when we summarize everything together, you will be able to appreciate that better. Okay. So, what we are going to do this is that let us uh, see this um, from the you know primal point of view. Okay. So, what do I mean by primal point of view? Let us say I solve the primal problem and then I observed again there are three different cases. I observed that um, for the point I solved primal I got a w star and I observed that w star transpose let us say x i y i um, is strictly less than 1 which means that the point is strictly classified with margin less than 1 or uh, which also implies that this could be a point which is misclassified. Um, now, what can we say about this right. So, the moment I observe that this happens uh, what can I say well I know that from my feasibility w star transpose x i uh, plus psi i star uh, is greater than or equal to 1. Now, this means that w star transpose x i y i is uh, or rather let me put it the other way psi i star is greater than or equal to 1 minus w star transpose x i y i. Um, now, this implies that we are assuming that the point satisfies w star transpose x i y i is strictly less than 1 that is the case we are in. Now, this means that epsilon i star is strictly uh, greater than 0 because this guy is strictly less than 1 the whole thing has to be strictly greater than 0. Um, well, if epsilon i star is strictly greater than 0 now by complementary slackness 2 we know that beta star i will be equal to 0 because the product has to be uh, the product has to be equal to 0. Um, now, beta i star equal to 0 implies alpha star i equals c right. So, now what is this saying? This is saying that if I solve the primal and I find that a point has strictly less than one margin, then it means that that point necessarily has alpha star i equals c. Right? So, I am not saying the point is lying on the hyperplane. The point is strictly away from the hyperplane, but on the wrong side, then that point is very, very important because alpha star i equals c for that point. That is the implication that we that we derive here. Um, the other case is case 2 is when w star transpose x i y i equals 0. Now, if I solve uh, sorry equals 1. Now, if I solve the um, primal problem and I observe that a point actually lies on the supporting hyperplane, can I say anything? Well, I know that epsilon star i is greater than or equal to 1 minus w star i transpose um, x i y i by feasibility. But now this guy is 1 which means that epsilon star i is greater than or equal to 0. I cannot really say anything more um, from this argument. Well, this just implies that alpha star i belongs to, well I cannot say anything about beta. If epsilon star i is greater than or equal to 0, beta can be greater than or equal to 0. If beta is greater than or equal to 0, then alpha has to be between 0 and c, right. So, I cannot really e take away any specific values for this alpha which means that if the point is on the supporting hyperplane right. So, then alpha star could be anywhere between 0 and c. It could be 0, it could be c, it could be anywhere between 0 and c. From the previous argument we said that if it is between 0 and c, if alpha star i is between 0 and c then I know that it has to be on the supporting hyperplane. But then if I find a point on the supporting hyperplane well it does not imply that alpha star i is between 0 and c. It is not a if and only if that is what I am trying to say. Uh, if, if, you if you solve the primal and you observe that a point is on the hy supporting hyperplane then it you can only conclude that alpha star i can be between 0 and c. That is the second case. Uh, the third case is uh, the good points where w star transpose x i y i is greater than 1 which means the points for which you know you are classifying this with margin greater than 1 which are like well away from your supporting hyperplane. Uh, now, this implies what? Well, this implies 1 minus you know w star transpose x i y i minus epsilon star i. Uh, what can we say about this? Well, if this is greater than 0, well we can conclude that well this guy is less than 0. Uh, but because epsilon star i is greater than or equal to 0, well we can say that this is a negative quantity. Um, now, this can be 0 or negative 
and so this whole thing is strictly less than 0. Well, if this whole thing is strictly less than 0, now by complementary slackness 1, we can conclude that alpha star i has to be 0. Well, what does this tell us? This tells us that those points which are classified with margin strictly greater than 1 do not matter. They do not really, um, you know, are part of this uh, support uh, or part of his W star. They do not contribute to W star. So, that is the conclusion that, that we are able to, um, able to derive, right. So, this is from the primal point of view. Um, now, let us let us just summarize all of this to see everything together so that it becomes uh, much clearer. Um, the summary is the following, right. So, so if I start looking at it from the dual point of view, uh, there are three cases alpha star equals 0, um, 0 and alpha star is between 0 and c and alpha star i equals c. So, if I look at it from the dual point of view, I have w star transpose uh, sorry primal point of view, I have w star transpose x i y i is less than 1, w star transpose x i y i equals 1 and w star transpose x i y i is greater than 1. Now, this is what we saw is that if alpha star i is equal to 0, this, this implies w star transpose x i y i is greater than or equal to 1, the it is classified with margin at least 1. If you find alpha star i is between 0 and c, then it is exactly on the hyperplane and if you find alpha star i equals c, then it is classified with margin less than or equal to 1. On the other hand, if you find a point which is which has strictly less than 1 margin, then that implies alpha star i equals c. If a point is on the hyperplane, then you cannot really conclude anything about alpha star i. And if the point is away from the hyperplane in the right way, then alpha star i does not contribute anything, right. So, the, it does not contribute anything to our, uh, to our final data point, final conclusion w star. So, this is the summary. Um, so, so, just to give a feel for in pictures, right. So, um, let us say we have a data set like this. Um, yeah. So, let us let, let say this was our w star. Now, if I told you that this is my w star, well, this is, these are the supporting hyperplanes. Uh, let us say this was my data set. bunch of points on this side, bunch of points on the line, maybe that is a point here. Um, let us say this was our, uh, this was my uh, data set. Now, if, if you are asked the question, if this is the scenario and let us say I solved the problem and I observed that W star is like this. Um, now, if I ask the question, well, what can I comment about the, which are the important points, which are the support vectors? Well, what can I say, right. So, I can go over each of the points and see, you know, what equation does it satisfy with respect to W star. Now, this is W star transpose x i y x i equals 1, this is W star transpose x i equals minus 1. Now, if you look at this, these points, right, so which are labeled with margin greater than 1 or these points which are also labeled with margin greater than 1 right. So, these are on, uh, I mean, these are not on the uh, supporting hyperplane, away from the supporting hyperplane and is classified correctly also. These points, right. So, any point like this for, does not contribute to my W star at all, right. So, alpha star is 0. Um, now, if I look at these points, right. So, this, this plus and this minus, um, now, maybe I should add a point here as well, maybe I will add a point here uh, as a plus point. Um, now, let us look at these these three points maybe, right. So, I can include this point as well in the, um, in the discussion um, or maybe there can be minus here also, right. So, these four points. Now, what can I say about these four points? Well, um, for these four points, W star transpose x i y i is strictly less than 1, right. So, in fact, for 
the points where I am uh, pointing with the arrow W star transpose X i Y i is actually less than 0 because they are incorrectly classified by W star whereas the points which are uh, uh, where I am pointing with dotted arrows these are correctly classified by, by W star because W star is eventually going to classify using this line right. So, the dotted uh, light blue arrow points are correctly classified by W star but then they are not classified with enough margin. So, it does not matter if it is correctly classified or not as long as it is not classified correctly classified with enough margin all these points are contribute you know similarly and then in fact they are the most important points. For these points alpha star equals C. Now, there are some more points which I am going to you know highlight using orange circles. So, these points what can I say about these points? Well, they are on the supporting hyperplane right. So, uh, if they are on the supporting hyperplane I cannot really conclude what is their alpha star going to be right. So, their alpha star can be anywhere between 0 and C. What I can conclude is that if I know that for a point alpha star is between 0 and C then I know that it has to be on the hyperplane. But it should it could so happen that this guy has alpha 0, this guy has maybe 1, uh, this guy has C, let us say C is greater than 1, uh, this guy has you know 0, this guy has 1, this guy has C. All sorts of things are possible here right. So, on the line it could be either 0, it could be C, it could be 1 right. So, um, but the moment I say that for this point, so 1 the value is 1 which is between 0 and C, then uh, I know for sure that this point is on this line right. So, these two points are on this line, uh, but if I just say that you know the point has value 0 or C, then I cannot really conclude it is exactly on the line right. So, on the line can take any value, on one side of the line you get exactly 0 values, on the other side of the line you get, you get exactly C values, on the line it can be anywhere between 0 and C. That is the conclusion that we draw <coughs> here. Now, the final point that I want to make about this is that still if you look at this picture, everybody, uh, so let me, let me point this right. So, this, this points can alpha star i can belong to 0 and c, I do not know right. So, it can be anywhere. <coughs> so, the final point that I want to say is that still if you look at the number of points which are actually going to contribute to my w star, they are, they are going to be only a handful because all the points with blue circles, dark blue circles, I have kind of, I know for sure that they are, their alpha star is 0. So, they do not contribute to my W star. The only ones that contribute to my W star are either on the hyperplane, supporting hyperplane or on the wrong side of the supporting hyperplane. This, the hope is that this set of points is still going to be a small set as compared to the billions of data points that we, we might have, right. So, because if your data set is indeed linearly separable, with some outliers with respect to you know whatever kernel that you are using, then it is you are still going to get a good W star where you the points which are not which are either on the supporting hyperplane or on the wrong side of it are going to be much smaller in number compared to the total number of data points. So, you still are going to get a sparse solution which means that uh, the conclusion is that even with respect to sparsity, the soft margin support vector machine does not lose out anything. That is the final conclusion that I want to draw. So, uh, to summarize uh, our discussion about soft margin support vector machine, uh, by looking at the dual, we are saying that it can be kernelized point number 1. Uh, the constraints for alphas are very simple. These are box constraints between 0 and C, which are easy to handle even if you are doing like a projected gradient descent kind of algorithm. And the final point is that you know the solution is still going to be sparse that is the number of points for which alpha star i is not is, is going to be non-zero is still going to be a handful of points when compared to the total number of points uh, that you have. So, all these make the soft margin support vector machine a super powerful elegant formulation um, and and that is why you know it is not just the theoretical elegance uh, that is why if you look at several practical applications this algorithm performs really well in practice. Uh, so, so, with this uh, what we have kind of um, what we can conclude uh, is that you know what we have seen so far is a very powerful uh, algorithm in classical machine learning called the support vector machine. We have looked at it in uh, quite some detail um, and, and this has 
you know, um, been successfully applied in several uh, applications, um, specifically in structured data, that is data where you have features in a structured format. Uh, this algorithm has been, uh, I mean, really um, found, found to be very useful in practice. Uh, now, the actual implementation of this algorithm, people have worked on a lot of, uh, you know, advanced techniques, optimization techniques to make this implementation really fast. Um, in fact, you can run this algorithm today using the fastest solver, uh, which runs in linear time in, in terms of the parameters of the problem. Uh, so, even with respect to the running the algorithm, you know, we have very solid optimization techniques, which we are not going to look at in this course, but it's good to be aware that, you know, um, is because it's a quadratic optimization problem, the natural question is how much time will it take to solve this problem? Uh, it's, it, does, it won't take uh, too much time typically. So, with all these advantages, uh, we, I want to conclude this uh, part of the course by saying that we, we have put down a solid algorithm, which is the soft margin support vector ma machine algorithm, which can deal with uh, non-structural relationships, uh, in, I mean classification boundaries, decision boundaries, it can deal with outliers, it, it is kernelizable, so it is a very powerful algorithm. Um, so, what we will, uh, so, so, I mean, one small point that I wanted to make uh, in contrast this with logistic regression, which is also, you know, it can deal with outliers, it, there is also a kernel version of it. Uh, so, these two algorithms uh, typically, you know, um, are comparable usually in practice, right. So, both these algorithms are, are uh, you know, well motivated algorithms, so to say, um, and there is subtle difference in terms of what they are trying to optimize. Um, but other than that, uh, both these algorithms are usually competitive in, in practice. So, um, people use, I mean, typically the idea is if you have a data set, you can try out both these algorithms and see uh, which one works well with respect to your validation set uh, and then choose that algorithm for your um, test set. So, with that, we conclude uh, the discussion about support vector machines. Um, and what we will see next time is um, is, is, is a broader uh, or a more uh, meta type of uh, approach to classification. We have seen several algorithms now, right, from naive base, um, you know, decision trees, uh, k nearest neighbors, logistic regression, support vector machine, perceptron, so on and so forth. Uh, so now we'll we'll look at a more broader viewpoint. We'll take a meta viewpoint, and uh, the next thing that we will start looking at are what are called as uh, ensemble classifiers um, and that will lead us to two interesting type of approaches uh, for classification called bagging and boosting which is what we'll start looking at uh, next in this course for now uh, we conclude the discussion about support vector machine and hope uh, you enjoyed it thank you